Hello my keto peeps, it's Samaya and welcome back to my YouTube channel, I Don't Sugarcoat. Today I am so excited you guys, I'm so, 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 so excited because I get to share with you guys a recipe that I have been wanting to share with people since the first time I made it. And this is a recipe you guys that has changed the game of keto eating for me the last couple of months and mostly because I am using something that is brand new to me, a wonderful new ingredient that I have been using. Um, it's not necessarily new, it's been out there, but I didn't know about it. And I've also noticed that not too many people seem to be using this ingredient as well. So I can't wait to share it with you because it is a phenomenal product if you ask me. Okay, so what is my new favorite ingredient? You guys. Lupin flour. You guys, I don't even know how to express how much I love this stuff. And if you don't know what lupin flour is, it's okay. I didn't know what it was two months ago either. Lupin flour comes from lupin beans. And before you jump down my stuff about beans being a legume and a no-no for keto, I know, I know already, but I want to say that we should accept that there are some gray areas where keto is concerned. And if you don't believe me, let's bring up peanuts. Because although they have nut in their name, they're not actually a nut. Peanuts are a legume as well. But people on keto consume them because they are low in carbs. And that is the same deal with lupin flour. Lupin flour has a total of 12 carbs, but 11 dietary fiber. And that's just one, people. One net carb per one fourth of a cup. And you don't even have to use that much of this stuff when you're cooking with it. I incorporate it with other ingredients and other flours like almond flour, cashew flour, and the stuff that I'm using here today. So, what are we making? Bread, guys. Good good keto bread and before you sigh or roll your eyes thinking to yourself oh god not another keto video about bread wait hear me out because this bread if you ask me is the closest you're gonna get to white bread and I'm serious I mean that this is not just me saying that because I have come up with this recipe that's not what it is at all I am being very serious with you. I would not recommend anything that I personally do not love or do not eat myself. So, let's get started. Now, I just wanna say that my recipe was inspired by another lady's recipe. Her name is Deidre, she has a YouTube channel. It's called Deidre's Kitchen. And I love this lady, because if it had not been for her and her recipe, it might've taken me a long time to get to this point with my recipe. So, thank you, Miss Deidre, love you. You guys, check out her channel. And you probably will love her bread recipe as well. Ours are very similar. There's just a difference in ingredients. Okay, let's get started for real. All right, so first we wanna start off with adding one cup and a fourth of vital wheat gluten. Guys, this is not wheat. It does not contain wheat, it's just gluten. It's just the gluten. Okay. To that, we want to add some oat fiber. Again, this does not contain oats, it's just the fiber from the oats. And this is a zero carb product. Zero net carb product. And now for the star of the show, you guys. My lupin flour. I know it's not mine, I didn't create it, I didn't come up with it, but I just love it so much. Okay, and now we wanna add, I like to add three tablespoons of a sweetener because if you pay attention to most bread recipes 
or just the back of a label of store-bought breads, they contain sugar. So this isn't gonna make it sweet or anything. It's just gonna make it taste more like regular bread. Now, I would say you can play around with this and do anywhere between two and four tablespoons. And we wanna add some salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. This is just a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and now we're gonna add some xanthan gum. This is a half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Guys, I'm still nervous, okay? So if you can tell that, I'm so sorry because like this is still very new to me, but I will get better as I make more videos, but bear with me because this is a little nerve wracking for me. Okay, now I like to take a whisk and whisk this all up, get it all nice incorporated together. So that way, by the time we add it into our wet ingredients, all this stuff is nice and blended and everything is gonna come together nicely. All right, can you get me some water? Talking to my daughter, who's my helper. Okay, now we're gonna work on our wet ingredients. We're gonna need a cup of warm water, hottish warm water. Um, I really should have had her giving me this water beforehand, but it's okay. All right. And now you want to let this water come down to, uh, I believe, between 125 to 131 degrees. And I'm just going to use a meat thermometer. We'll let that sit in there and watch this time. And I'm actually gonna just pause this while this water gets down to the temperature that we need. And then we'll come right back and get started on the wet ingredients. All right, guys, my water is now at 131 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and get it poured into my KitchenAid bowl here. And today I'm using this stand mixer because I just love using it for making bread. Um, if you don't have one, you can still make this recipe. Um, you'll just be having to knead the dough by hand, which will take a little more time, but I know some people prefer to do it that way anyway. All right, to our hot water, we want to add one tablespoon of instant yeast. And now I'm gonna add the paddle attachment and I'm just gonna let that mix just a little bit so it gets incorporated into the water. The yeast smells really comes out at you once you start to mix it up, you can really smell the yeast. Okay, and now I'm gonna do a step that you don't technically have to do. And if you wanna pass on this, you totally can, but I like to do it just kinda as a precaution. So I'm gonna be adding one teaspoon of honey, and I know, again, honey is one of those things that you are not to consume on, on keto, but it is only one teaspoon, and when you think about how many slices of bread you're gonna end up with, that's gonna be somewhere between one carb or less than one carb per slice at, at it, I mean. So, you can do it, you cannot do it. I'll leave that up to you. All right, and I'm gonna let that get a nice little mix on it real quick. lightly beaten eggs to the mix.
and then two tablespoons of room temperature butter. And we're gonna let that mix up together. Now here comes my favorite part, adding the dry into the wet. And you want to just go ahead and add it all in, try not to spill. I do it every time though. I need it. See? See? I did it. Okay. And you want to keep the paddle um, attachment on and just go ahead and turn it on low and let it incorporate. Okay, now, something you'll notice when cooking with lupin flour is it's a pretty, it absorbs a lot of liquid. And usually I find that I have to add more liquid than normal um, to recipes that I used to make prior to using lupin, lupin flour. But with this bread recipe, I didn't need to add any extra. And I was surprised by that, but it turns out great. Okay, and now you wanna go ahead and take the paddle attachment off. And I like to just use um, a spatula and just bring the dough together into a ball because it's gonna make it easier once you put the dough cook on or to catch and start to spin it. And you don't really need to scrape down the sides all that well because as it's kneading, it's gonna scrape those and add them into the dough. So you don't need to worry about it, it'll get it. Okay, so you put your dough attachment on, make sure you lock it in place. And now we're gonna put this on to medium speed and we are gonna let this go for eight minutes. All right, you guys, it's done. It's been eight minutes and our dough is ready to come out of here. So let's get it off the hook. And don't worry about if a little bit separates, it's easy to put back into the ball of dough. Okay, now you'll see you've got a nice, stretchy, good textured dough here. All right, now you can take this and go ahead and put it in one baking pan and then let it start to rise. But what I like to do is I like to split this dough in half and make two loaves because it makes two nice sized loaves. So it's just your prep, it's just your personal preference of what you want to do. I'm gonna weigh them because I like to make sure that my macros are as close to accurate as possible. So I'm gonna weigh each one and get it as close to even as possible. Oh my God, you guys, it's perfect. They're both 1269. Okay, so now I'm just gonna mold my dough into the shape of a loaf of bread. That's what I like to do, just to make it come out nice and pretty when it rises. And then I'm gonna set it in the bottom of the loaf pan. And I just like to pull it and kind of tuck toward the bottom right here. That way the top is nice and smooth. You wanna get a nice smooth top. The next thing you want to do is you wanna cover them with either a wet towel 
or um, you want to cover them with a wet towel or not wet, damp, damp you guys, not wet. It's kind of late, so I'm a little tired, okay. So you wanna cover them with a damp towel or you wanna use some saran wrap that you spray with some cooking oil. And I'm gonna do saran wrap today. Um, now, I usually don't use the arrow, I think aerosol spray, is that what it is? I don't know. But I usually don't use this canister of spray anymore. And I forgot the reasons why it's bad for you, but I'm out of the other stuff. If you know the reason why using these types are bad for you, go ahead and leave that in the comments below because I forgot. All right, now if I can have my assistant, go ahead, come on over. All right, this is my daughter, Samara. Samara, say hello to people. Hi. She wants to get out of here as quick as possible. <laughs> okay, and this is my favorite part. She hates this part, but it's mine. Because Saran Wrap doesn't like to behave, I have to have someone holding it so I can spray it. So. I didn't get you. I didn't. I didn't get her. I promise. Maybe a little bit. And then you just want to lay it gently on top of there. Wait, wait, wait! I got another one. I got another one. She's ready to go. Come on, last one, last one, last one. Hold it like that. Hold it close. You've been an amazing assistant. Okay, and now we're just gonna lay it over this one. And my kitchen is pretty warm right now, guys. So I'm gonna leave this sitting out, room temperature, and let these rise. And you wanna let them rise for about an hour to an hour and a half so they'll get a nice, good rise on them. Um, but if your kitchen is kind of cold, go ahead and do this method. Get a microwavable safe cup, put some hot water in it, stick it in your microwave, turn it on for one minute, so that way the microwave can get nice and warm and kind of humid with the water. Then put your bread pan in there and leave the water in there as well, and you're gonna let it sit in there and rise. So it's got a nice warm space. But for me, my kitchen's kind of warm right now, so it's gonna stay right here and rise, and we'll come back when they're ready to put in the oven. All right, guys, welcome back. It's been an hour and a half, and look at our bread. It looks amazing. They look phenomenal. They have risen so beautifully. This is why I like to cut this dough into two, because look, it totally makes two. And it also cuts down on the carbs per slice when you cut the loaf in half like this. So. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the plastic off. Oh, you guys, this is beautiful. I mean, this one is shaped a little bit better than that one, but it makes no never mind. Cause once they get in the oven, once they cook up, guys, they're going to be beautiful. And when you smell your kitchen while these are cooking, I'm telling you, you're gonna think you have white bread in your oven. That's what it reminds you of. Look at this, like, look. It is phenomenal, I swear. It's great, it looks great. It's so great, you guys, look. It's so great. So, what we wanna do now is, we wanna put these in an oven that has been preheating to 375 degrees. Now, you want to set your timer for about 10 minutes because something that I noticed about this um, particular bread recipe is I believe it's because of the lupin flour, it browns really quickly. So what I do is, is after 10 minutes and it's got a nice golden brown, 
I like to lay a sheet of aluminum foil over each one. You don't want to put it on tightly, you just want to lay it over them. So that way it'll stop browning and it can cook the addition the additional seven minutes that it needs to cook to be completely done. So set a timer, check it after 10 minutes. Now, it could be that my stove cooks a little bit faster than others. Maybe your stove will do the same thing, maybe it won't. But just to be safe, set your timer for 10 minutes, check it, and if you feel as though it's at the perfect color you want it, cover it. If not, you wait until it's at your desired color. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven. And when they're ready, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what these beauties look like once they're all done. All right, guys, the bread is out. It is done. 17 minutes have passed. And look, you guys, look at this. It's so beautiful. And if you have made this bread and if you can smell what it smells like right now, I bet you cannot wait to cut into one of these loaves and do something with it. But right now, these are steaming hot, very hot, and I'm gonna let these sit a little while so that way I can get them out of the pans and then I'm gonna get one sliced open for you. So we're gonna take another little short break, but it's gonna seem like an instant. And I'm gonna come back and we're gonna go ahead and slice one open so you can see what the inside of one of these babies look like. Now, I should say, do not worry about your bread deflating a little. They're gonna do that, that's natural for all bread. It will deflate just a little, but it will still be a wonderful loaf. I'm telling you, this is gonna be the best bread you've had on keto, I promise you. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Hey guys, I'm back and the bread has cooled enough for me to be able to cut. And I'm gonna be using this little gadget here for cutting bread. Um, I know that probably seems strange, but I'm a little bit anal about symmetry. I can't help it. I like things to be geometrically symmetric. So I'm gonna slice a few slices of the bread and let you guys see what the inside looks like. Excuse the noise if you can hear that. The only thing about this little doohickey is it doesn't like to be still. Okay, let's see if I got it right. Okay, you guys, can you see this? Can you see it? Look at this. Look at it, guys. Oh, oh it's a little stuck there, but we'll get it off. Look, I, what did I say? Yes, it's a little yellow on the inside because that's the color of the lupin flower. But you guys, look at that. That is a slice of bread, regular bread. It's so soft, it's so, so tender. It smells like bread. I'm telling you, you are going to be in love with this bread recipe. You're not gonna wanna make any other kind except for this one. This is my new fave. This is the one my husband likes. I'm telling you, it is fabulous. Now, I do wanna let you know that at the time that I'm shooting this video, the actual brand that I use of Lupin Flour is um, out of stock. So hopefully it'll be back in stock by the time that I post this video and you guys can purchase some. But if it's not in stock, I will go ahead and leave a link for 
an alternative because I really want you guys to get going making this bread so you can see just how fantastic it is. And once you guys have made it, send me a picture in the comments if you can, or let me know how it turned out. Let me know what you think, how did it taste? I wanna know. So thank you for taking time out to watch my video. I'm so happy to be able to have shared this recipe with you. Go ahead and hit that like button if you like this video. Click the subscribe, click that little bell so you can get notifications for when I post new videos. And I'll try to make sure that I'm posting um, at least two recipe videos a week, but don't hold me to that just yet because I do have a lot of stuff going on. But I will try my hardest to get you guys two videos a week. And um, for now, I guess this is it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.